Good afternoon. My name is Kasaya Lewis, and today we'll be talking about animations in React. So how do you animate with React? The answer is really any way you want. But if you know CSS, you already know how to animate with React. But what if you want to animate something complex, and you don't necessarily want to write out all the code yourself? Or what if you want to apply one animation to many components without adding a CSS class name to each component? And what tools and resources are provided to us by Facebook or other uh, parties that are available to help us animate our components? I hope we can answer these questions by the end of this talk. So today we're going to use CSS Transitions and React Transition Group, a third party package called React Screen, higher order components, and the animation library TweenMax to animate a UI for a fake e-commerce site. A site with a very silly name and an even sillier concept called Airbnb. <laughs> Airbnb is basically for anyone who wants new bundles of hair for their next wig or the next set of extensions, but instead of going to the beauty shop, as one should do, <laughs> they would rather buy or rent hair from off the heads of their neighbors. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is just add a few animations to uh, spruce up this website a little bit. And back. Oops. Okay. So for our first task, we are going to animate the appearance of a search box uh, a search form upon clicking a search icon. For this, we're going to use CSS transitions, and so we're going to need Facebook's React transition group. It's not an NPM package, but you can fork it and download it from GitHub. Here's our starting point. We have a hero component, which is the large hero image on the home page. And I'm going to render a search form, so I have my search there. And we need to wrap anything we're going to uh, use CSS transitions for in a CSS transition group component, which we import from Facebook's React transition group. Then we have to write some CSS. So here I have search enter and search enter, search enter active. You can think of that as a starting point and the ending point of the animation. So I'm saying when it starts, I want the width to be zero. By the time the animation ends, I want the width to be 90% of its container. And it's going to take place over a time period of 0.4 seconds. And then we're going to add properties to the CSS transition group tag. Uh, it's very important that these reflect what is in your uh, CSS. For example, I have transition name equals search because in my CSS, all of my uh, class names began with search. Then we're just going to add some logic to um, activate the click handler. So I have something in my state um, that's either true or false that will basically um, tell React whether or not to render the search component. And at the bottom, I'm rendering the search component based on the condition uh, of whether should show search in our state is true. And that's about it, so let's see what that looks like. And there it is. So that wasn't too hard. For our second task, we're going to animate page transitions. I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. You can use CSS transitions, like we just did, or you can use CSS keyframes. If you're using keyframes, you don't need to use React transition group. All right, so first, as you can see, I have an app component um, that has children. So we're running the children inside of the app. And since we're using CSS transitions, we need CSS transition group again. But since we're going to be passing props down to the children, we need to use react.clone element. And then this is my CSS, so this time I want it to fade, so I'm just changing the um, opacity of the pages as they enter. Um, as you can see, I have fade enter and fade appear, which sound like they're the same thing. They're actually different, so we use fade appear when the page is first loading, and fade enter um, for elements that are entering the DOM after the page has already loaded. Okay, now if you're not going to use transitions, this is another way to do it. Um, we're using keyframes. So I've defined a class with an animation property, and then I have um, a keyframe block. You, you see there are 0% and 100%. Again, just think of that as the start and the end. So basically I'm saying here I want, it to, uh, I want the page to translate on the x-axis 
by the time the animation um, ends. OK, and finally, just like what we just did, um, add all the properties to the CSS transition group tag if you're using CSS transitions. If you're not, if you're using keyframes, you don't need a CSS transition group tag. So let's see what both of these look like. So this is using CSS transitions and the fade in, fade out. OK. And this is using keyframes with the translate x property. OK. <laughs> All right. OK. For our third task, I can find my mouse. For our third task, I wanted to um, add a carousel for like a how-to guide to uh, let users know how to use the site. Um, for this, we're going to use a third-party node package called React Screen. So you can just npm install it, and on their website, they have a link to the CSS that you can use. So our starting point is we have four different how-to cards on our uh, how-to component. I just wanted to render them in a carousel form. This is really all we have to do. So each card is going inside of a screen slice. And then all the slices are going inside of a screen. Both of those are imported from the React screen package. And that's it. Let's see what it looks like on the home page. So as you scroll down, you should see, there we go, one, two, <laughs> three, and four. I really like this package. It's very simple, it's elegant, and it's very easy to use. All right. So for our final task, we are going to um, animate the appearance of a uh, report user form. Okay, given that this is a site where people are literally renting hair from off each other's heads, there are definitely going to be some complaints. So I want my users to have an easy way to report a user if, for example, someone has lice or something. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to use higher order components with the animation library TweenMax. So just get the script tag for TweenMax from their website and put it in your HTML. And then we're going to need to react to transition group again. All right, so here's our starting point. I have some results cards and some report cards that you saw on my results page. First, we're going to write our higher order component. Um, as Sarah talked about last week, a higher order component is a function that takes a component and returns an enhanced component. So here we're going to enhance our components with some animations. So that's what we have here. And you can see some uh, lifecycle hooks that you may not have seen before. React has some lifecycle hooks that are specific to animations, not just component will enter and component will leave, but there are some others that you can use depending on what you need. Then at the bottom, we're just returning the component with whatever props it has. And this is how we're going to use the tweenmax from to function. Tweenmax has many different functions and tools that you can use. Um, and they let you specify different things, like the time, uh, different transitions, rotations, 3D effects, a lot of cool, a lot of cool things. Um, so here, um, I'm using the rotation property and opacity um, to tell the element to rotate and to fade in or fade out. Okay, so now I'm just adding uh, my tweenmax function uh, to the lifecycle hooks. Okay, in this specific example, I'm using rotation y, um, which means I want the card to rotate on the y-axis. Okay, now I need to call my functions with both of my cards, um, with my results card and my report card. And I've exported them into the component where they're actually going to be rendered. OK, and then this is um, everything else we have to do. So as you can see, I have uh, my state set up, and I have a toggle function that uh, changes the state depending on um, you know, which side of the card should be rendered. Um, so as it is here, this actually will work if you only have one card. If you have multiple cards, um, when you click one of them, all of them will flip. So you need to set up your state a little bit differently if you have more than one card. Also, notice how we're using just transition group and not CSS transition group, because we're not using CS CSS here. 
Um, so that is it. Let's see what that looks like on our website. So let's go to the results page. All right, so I can pretty much report anyone I want to for any reason. Maybe he has no hair at all. <laughs> maybe she's shady. Maybe she has lice, etc. And when I click submit, they just split back around. All right. Next. So some takeaways. Um, you don't really need jQuery. In fact, a lot of developers would say that you absolutely should not use jQuery with React. All you really need is CSS. But there are many libraries and packages out there that can help you. One I didn't mention is React Motion, which is really popular. Higher order components are great for animation, um, especially if you're animating multiple things with the same, uh, multiple components with the same animation. And you can be as creative or as lazy as you want with your animations. Here are some resources, and that is it. Thank you very much.